<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Headcracks Hip Hop Spies. The dude is making hella waves. And my man is at the forefront of a new movement that I think is on the way of uh, changing the face of Atlanta hip hop. You see them in the streets, but now you see them on the TV. One time for Gunna. You dig? Young Gunna Gunna in the building. Yo, this man. Morning. Thank you so much for coming to live so early to, you know, to wake up with us early. and get to it, man. Motivated. And you give it us fashion. You give it us fashion early. It's the beauty of it. <laughs> drip, in the, drip, drip in the morning. Yo, man, there's so many places we could go with it, man. Let's let's start at the origin of it all, man. Gunna. Yeah. For those who just are now seeing you hearing your name for the first time, where do you come from? Gunna. He come from the south side of Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? Flat Show, Old National. I'm saying, born and raised. Now, for people who break, like, you know, parts of Atlanta down via zones, is that a zone? No. Zone, we don't have a zone. The zone is, we just the south side. South side the, of Atlanta. We on the outskirts. We outside of the city. Yo, shout out to all of us who rep the outskirts. I live in Mableton. We don't have a zone either. Right. We should claim one, though, right? Like, like. We could. We can make our own zone. Yeah. Like, can we be seven and eight? Or nine and ten. Ten what? zone. Yeah, see? Yeah. Ten the big, zone. The big ten. <laughs> Word. Yeah. So, first time you decided to, like, pick up a mic or pick up a pen and rhyme, how old were you? I had to be about 14. Yeah, early. Was it something that prompted you? Was it, like, a school talent show? I, I always like the music, just, like, headphone-wise. And then, like, I just got introduced to a studio, like, just with young with a young crew, like, me and just group of boys that I grew up with and I ain't leave that studio to, to, I couldn't go there and then just got caught up in a whole nother studio I've been going to the studio for a while now so was it an epiphany for you when you finally like you know when you make it to the studio and you realize that yo I actually might be like kind of better at this than a lot of people for sure I, I, I always like got like a lot of good feedback from you even if it wasn't just from a lot of people and I just took that like in consideration, like, man, somebody like like this music. So I know there's more people out here. They just need to hear it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, were you a part of a crew? Like, I mean, I know you said you went there with yeah, your boys. Like, like, did your, your friends rhymed as well? Yes. Like, I grew up with just a bunch of, like, homies. Like, we all was just rapping. Like, it's old videos, everything just coming up. Now, out of everybody in that original starting crew, who's still doing it? And has anybody, still, like, you know, went to another it. level? Um, not yet. Every, like a couple of us, like still like going, like like me and my day ones, like Nietzsche, like we just still edit to this day. And and it done brought us more like we done seen progress. Like as you see, it just finally just getting heard and we getting like the recognition that we wanted. Yeah, and, yeah. and your underground bubble is, I mean, shoot, it's popped. It's not even an underground bubble no more. Right. I mean, it was and it. Sh- I still feel like an underdog just coming up still, even just seeing all the fans and just showing me love. Just I still feel like, boy, you got to go. You just you still got to go hard and make a real name. Let these folks know how long you've been doing it. Like, seriously. Now, if you was to put like an amount of time on it that you've really been putting into your craft, like how many years would you say it's been? To, well, I'm, I would say about, about four or five years that I just really just don't just focus like, like sacrifice, I ain't doing nothing but rapping. Like, and what was the tipping point? Um, just phase. I'm just going through a phase, just coming up, just different situations. Just like, man, you know, you could be doing this, you could be doing this, and you know, it just you get to a point where you like, man, I got, I got the chain. Yeah, like, your parent, everybody, your mom, everybody looking at you like, what you gonna do? Like, yeah, it was that point. Got you. So you yeah. was getting in trouble out there a little bit. For sure. Really? Yeah. Like, what it, were you involved in? I did like a little ten, like a little ten month, like a little bit, just, just active, just trying to get me some money, just active, just always like never nothing violent, just hustling, just you know what I'm saying? That's what type of person I was. Like that's my whole background. Just he always was just a hustler, buy this money, buy this clothes, same to this day. You know, and the crazy thing, right? You know, when you look at like some of our white counterparts, sometimes they hustle the same way we hustle. Exactly. You know, sometimes we hustling to get like you know probably a little bit more material things than our counterparts. But right. if you look at every major company that's ever been formed, 
there's been some hustle in there. Like a lot of major companies were built on dirty money. People who probably ran some scams, fraud right. some people. And they got their own vices. Everybody got their vices for their, how they like to spend. It might not be clothes. Their fetish might be women or men or just, you know what I'm saying? Like everybody got their vices that, that they want to. That they want to spend like and cherish, like it's like treat themselves. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, obviously your vice is fashion. I don't think I've ever seen too many pictures of you where like you you, know, you wasn't you wasn't looking red carpet ready. Fashion God. <laughs> fashion God. I've I've been loving. I, I've been. I wore best dress high school. You know what I'm saying? I always been just a fresh, clean. Just kept myself together. You know what I'm saying? Now. When you were in a situation like a high school where maybe you didn't have the money to necessarily pull off the looks that you wanted to pull off, right? How was you getting it? Man, you you gotta just finesse your way. I I was into like um like um like you know the coat consignment stores. Mm -hmm. I used to go to them like like get used like designer like I used to be like like that like I gotta find it like I just it got to be real though. <laughs> you a lucky dude to find anything that fit like every I mean like you know I'm a weird shaped dude so every yeah, time you, I go to a consignment store like you know they be having the finest collection of medium clothing yeah available. see you gotta be early you gotta be up early like today on, on, up on that on their phone searching so to this day you still hit up the consignment shops and look for stuff not no more but I probably like maybe like two years ago might have been my last time just going just I ain't really been lately cause I just, I mean, everything the latest, everything like new. Fall, fall new. in there, get it, pop that tag. Yeah, I'm, I'm in the store early too. Yeah. Man, like it, it's dope to see that, like you know, that care come back to it. Cause like when you look at, I mean, I mean, you're a young dude, born in what, 1993. 93. So yeah. you missed an era of, I guess like fashion decadence. You know, 80s. cause like when you look at guys like you know in the 80s, it right. was all about. Stunt and styling, like a right. lot of you know. I mean, similar to now, how like a lot of like rappers' best friends were like drug dealers, and you right. know, and like yo, fashion was everything in the early part of hip hop. I paid attention to it. I paid attention to it. Even like just coming up, just watching like Hayden Full, like how they were going Gucci trenches, Louis trenches. Like, I paid attention to that, and I was like, like focused, like oh man, I got to get that. <laughs> you no, know, just. Back then, like seeing like, oh, they dripping back then, like yeah. Dapper Dan for real, yeah. Back then, so I just, I always just done been like, like very just like into it, like looking into fashion, like. Yo, you know Dapper Dan still making pieces, right? Yeah. Yeah. Dapper Dan, how he's me. still alive and kicking. Like you Swell. could, you could be the Atlanta guy who makes that bridge between New York and Atlanta, man, and show up with some custom Dapper Dan pieces. Ain't nobody got. It's hard. That'd be hard. Yeah, man. Yo, if, if anybody can pull it off, you can. No cap. Double down. Hit my line. <laughs> IG. DM me. Hopefully you see it, man. <laughs> Spread the word. Yeah. Now, you recently, uh, you know, got an opportunity to take a trip to Hawaii. Yeah. Work with uh with Travis Scott on yeah. the uh, the long-awaited World project. Yeah, shout out Travis, man. You know what I'm saying? Not a Good lot of dude. people got that phone call, but you was a part of a special group, man. It's the beauty of me. Just being consistent, and then I, I already knew Travis. Like you know, we had we had a song together, me, him, Thug, Gucci, um, Floyd Mayweather. It was on it was on um Jeffrey Thug album. So back then, like we even connected then. Just he like, oh, you hard. I just stayed at it, like just and just time just caught up with it itself. You know what I'm saying? Now, now everybody just paying attention. And I'm getting the results that I want. Word. Now you yeah. seem like a guy who's pretty reserved. Usually keeps his composure. But was there ever a cosign or a phone call you got from an artist to where like you know you was cool when you got the information, and then when nobody was looking, you was like, hey. Um. Nah, I ain't even gonna cap like, like not yet. Like that, that like when I get that call, I'm, I'm gonna let you know. <laughs> I ain't even just got that call. I'll be like, oh yeah, this is real, real like. Like, it's real, like, for sure. Yeah, my brother out here winning early, man. So, you like, three volumes in on the drip season. Yeah. Uh, you got, boy, with three EPs out right now. Four EP. I got Dribble Drown 1, Dribble Drown 2 on the way. I did DS, DS1 to DS3. Before I did DS3, I dropped, uh, um, like, a nine, like, a nine-song album called Dribble Drown. Um, 
produce just by Weezy only. So I'm coming back again, Dribble Drown 2, DOD 2, on the way. And, and, and let's put a stamp on this whole drip thing, just for people who may think <laughs> that, you know, drip got popping when Migos came out with it. This has been your campaign for quite some time. Honestly and truthfully, I don't, but they, it seems like it's a lot, like, a lot of controversy about the word drip. And I don't really cuss. When they really, when you really know what you're doing, you don't really got to speak on too much. It really don't, all, everything else fly past you. It don't mm-hmm. even touch you. So I don't even feel like I got to be like, hey, I started drip. Woo, woo, woo. It's just self-explanatory. Y'all on three. I've been talking about drip. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Everybody caught on to my, my drip on, on season three. So you know it was a two and a one. You got to do your history. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes yeah. people don't do the Googles, they don't do the research, and they just look at things on face value. But, I mean, right. you've been in here putting in work for a long time. Right. And the quality was always there. You know, f- from from the first project all the yeah, way up to this new that, joint. Bro, Hotel sure. room joint. Yeah. Dope. It's hard. Um, and yeah, you tell me they can't relate. Yeah. Man. That's one of the first ones I shot at L.A. How was your first trip out to L.A.? Because, like, I mean, as a guy who's in the fashion, I know your wa- your eyes had to be wide open on that whole what? shop situation. I go to Rodeo every time I go to L.A. now. It's just, I, when I first went to L.A., I can't, I, re- I really can't even remember the first day because I don't been out there so many times. Like, just after the first time I just went, I just been going back. Like, that's like my second home, L.A. I love L.A. Would you but ever see yourself leaving Atlanta, moving to LA? No, I would go stay like a month or two, but I gotta like come back to the city. City, city is the city, like it's home. Yeah, I mean, one of the dope things about Georgia as an entire state, the way you can live, versus the way you're gonna have to try to live in some of these like larger cities like New York or LA, because like you know we have LA guys come here all the time, and, you know who are from LA. Yeah, they just refuse to leave because it's you know. It's the only life they it's know. It's what they used to. Like, it's what I'm used to. Like, I love L.A. Like, I really will kick it out there, but I can't stay. I just, I don't know. I just I got to come back home. So I feel they coming from, like, it's just home. Like, even if you done just been getting money, you know you can stay in a whole other state. You still want to just come back home and just spread the wealth. These people you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 